Either you're waiting patiently by the door for your own ROG Xbox Ally to show up, or you've just unboxed yours and you want to know how best to get it set up. Either way, let's get that gaming handheld up to speed as quickly as possible so you can get gaming. To start setting up your Xbox Ally, get it plugged into a power outlet with the provided 65 watt charger, and then hit the power button. Now the Windows 11 setup wizard is going to guide you through some options to get yourself up and running, including signing into an existing Microsoft account or setting one up if you don't already have one. You're also going to be prompted to connect to a network to allow for some crucial Windows and software updates while you move through the rest of the wizard, so make sure you've got your Wi-Fi credentials nearby. In case it wasn't obvious, you can actually already use the controls on the Xbox Ally to navigate this, including the keyboard, which I think is a bit neater than just using the touchscreen, but both options are there for you, whichever you find quickest. There'll likely be a few updates here, so you can just feel free to leave your device for a little while, go make a cuppa, grab a bicky, or watch some of our other content on your phone for some game recommendations. And while I've got you here, why not hit subscribe as well so that you don't miss any future Xbox Ally videos that we've got in store. Very important step, you have to name your device. Best recommendation in the comments can have, I don't know, a heart. Do you like that? Just a couple more Windows updates, and then we're gonna start setting up those security features. Time to log in with my totally not embarrassing gamertag email address that I set up when I was like 14. Now you can just type away to add this in, but if you're really smart, you should actually click on sign in options. Because if you've done this in advance, you can use a security key, like on your phone. So now, instead, I'll just get a QR code get the phone out, scan that, and log in with my phone instead. Way quicker. Now eventually, you'll also be asked to set up some security measures such as the fingerprint scanner and a pin to log in, which all is optional, but highly recommended. So just follow the instructions on screen and it will walk you through everything. Once that's said and done, the device will boot into Xbox and we can start to play some games. Well, almost. There are a couple of other key updates I'd highly recommend getting done as well, just for the best possible experience on your Xbox Ally. You got two ways of doing this. You can either press the Xbox button, head to the settings widget, click more settings, hit Windows update, and then check for the updates here. Download everything you see here and Bob's your uncle. But if Fanny's your aunt, you could instead press the Command Center button, open Armory Crate SE, hit Update Center, and grab all the pending updates you see here. Now, this is a really good step to get familiar with because it helps to deliver crucial optimization updates for the AMD components that power the Xbox Allies gaming performance. So you're going to want to check in on this app periodically just to see if Armory Crate has any new updates for you as time goes on. So now that we're all good from a device level, let's reboot it one last time just to get those downloads installed fully and then get to some gaming. Now, people familiar with Xbox, you could probably skip ahead a bit, but for the newbies, let's get a rundown on how the handheld optimized experience works within Xbox. First things first though, we've got to sign in. And you can use the account that you use during the Windows setup, or you could bring in a new account if you've got separate accounts for some reason. Don't worry, I don't think it's shady or anything. You've probably just got a really embarrassing email address for your gamer tag that you didn't want your workplace to know about. It's fine, it happens. Once you are signed in, you'll be introduced to the home page of the Xbox app, where you'll see the jump back in shelf, highlighting any games that you've played on console, PC, or via cloud gaming previously. And it's actually a really nice way to find the games that you might be keen to install immediately from your current rotation. Further along down the homepage though, we've also got tons of other shelves that are highlighting some more great game recommendations, as well as the all important handheld optimized collection of titles. Now these have gone through rigorous testing by Xbox to ensure that they're compatible with your Xbox Ally. And that's not to say that there are games that aren't in this program that you can't play, it's just that these ones have been tested for you so that they're fully compatible with the Xbox Ally's screen size, built-in controller, all that jazz. Next, Game Pass subscribers will probably also see a few nods towards the benefits that they get as part of their subscription. And if you're not a Game Pass subscriber, don't actually worry about that because your Xbox Ally comes with three months of Xbox Game Pass Premium, which you can redeem at that top banner or by hitting the notification bell, and you can redeem it there. There'll be some T's and C's in the description for how that all works. Once you have redeemed it, you should also check out the Game Pass section for the full list of games available with your subscription. Click on a title that you're interested in, hit Install, and get it queued up for 
download. But you've probably also noticed that on many of these games, there's the option to play them via cloud gaming. And this is a great way to jump straight into the title without the added wait time of installing it natively to your Xbox Ally, as well as giving you access to a ton of great console games that you might own, such as Cyberpunk 2077, Mafia of the Old Country, and loads more. If you want to check out even more cloud gaming titles, you can hit up the full cloud gaming section just here, just above the store, which is where you can also purchase titles to own outright as well. If you own some games on other PC storefronts, such as Battle.net, you should also head to the My App section of the library and get those storefronts installed now as well. Once they're done and you've logged into each one of them, feel free to download any games that you've got in those storefronts too. You can view and launch the games that you install from any PC storefront within Xbox, rather than having to bounce back and forth between them, thanks to the aggregated gaming library within the Xbox app. But that quick navigation is actually pretty nifty, to be fair. It's part of the Xbox full screen experience and to get there you just hold down the Xbox button and then you get these console inspired tabs which are really quick to flick between but if for any reason you need to get into the full Windows experience you can also do that from here as well when you play a game on your Xbox Ally normally it will run perfectly fine without any hitching but for those weird moments where something doesn't feel quite right or if you just simply want to have even more control over how a game runs hit up the armory crate to set up your game profiles now game profiles can apply to the games that you play in a number of ways it can let you set up some custom control schemes for games where the default controls don't quite sing for you or you can use it to set up some power options to make the most of your gpu or battery to access Armory Crate on the fly, tap the Command Center button and then click Open Armory Crate SE. Yeah, you remember it from when we were updating stuff before? Hover over a game and hit X and Set Game Profile and you can start tinkering away. You can completely remap the control scheme via key mapping. You can change the dead zones, you can change the response curves of your analog sticks, the actuation points of your triggers, some vibration settings, gyro behavior, and more. Now there's some very helpful options under configuration, where here you can choose which power mode your ally will use specifically for a game. So here's a recommendation. For indie games, I think you can just stick it on performance just to save battery while still getting great performance. But if you're into AAA bangers, choose turbo for maximum gains best frame rate best visuals it will look lush the bottom menu is for gpu settings which offers a suite of advanced graphics options provided by those juicer amd apus that power the xbox allies to keep things simple you can just leave these as is and you'll get some great performance but for the more technical folks out there you can actually pick and choose from settings like super resolution fmf boost and more but if you just want to access these features on the fly, rather than setting them up in advance, you should get familiar with the command center. This dedicated button just sits right next to the Xbox button, and we did use it earlier to get to Armory Crate. You remember that? Yeah, good times. Anyway, the command center is more than just an Armory Crate superhighway. It also allows you to swap operating modes on the fly if you feel like you need a bit more juice in a particularly graphically demanding section of a game. You can also switch control modes, which is actually a way of making the ally's inputs behave more like a mouse and keyboard. There's brightness here, volume sliders as well, power shutdown options that are right there. And like much of the rest of the Xbox Ally experience, it is completely customizable. Pressing Y actually allows you to customize the shelf of the command center, adding or removing modules as you require. So for frequent flyers, the airplane mode toggle might be quite handy. Or if you like to really manage your battery, get the refresh rate toggler and FPS limiter slapped in there. Game visual, that's super nifty for people who like to change up the color profile based on the game that they're playing with presets for everything from FPS, RTS, Vivid, and even like an eye care setting. So get your command center set up just the way you want it to, and you're gonna be flying through settings in no time. Now let's say you're a well-equipped gamer. You might have some really nice peripherals lying about that would actually service your Xbox Ally pretty well. Anything like headphones, earbuds, they can just go straight into the 3.5 millimeter jack right here. While peripherals like keyboard or mice, they can actually plug into the USB-C port at the top. The Xbox Ally also has Bluetooth built right in, ready to connect to any wireless Xbox controllers, mice, keyboards, headphones, the whole lot. To do that, you're gonna hit the Xbox button here, you're gonna head over to the settings cog, scroll down till you see Bluetooth, and then click Manage Devices, which will bring you into the Windows settings. Then it'll just say Connect a New Device, press Add Device. Make sure that the device you're trying to connect is in sync mode. So for an Xbox controller, you turn it on, and then you hold down the sync button or pair button at the top. It'll start to flash. 
and then we can connect it on our Ally. Very nice. And this is great because I can actually now use that as a controller on my Ally straight away. Look at that. Isn't that clever? And you might think it's a bit silly that I'm using a controller on a device that has a controller built in, but imagine for a sec that you had this plugged into a TV as well. Yeah, now we're talking. Let me show you how to do it. Yes, you can actually hook up your Xbox Ally to a big screen like a TV or a monitor. There is a good chance that you'll probably need a new cable or a dongle or something like that to do that, but they're pretty fairly easy to come by online. Also though, Asus actually sell a charging dock, which will A, charge your Ally, but also adds in an HDMI output on top so that you can use an HDMI cable, one which you probably already have lying around the house somewhere from a previous device. So that's actually quite nifty, very easy to set up as well. Here's a little handy tip for when you're connecting to an external display. If you'd rather the screen on the Xbox Ally turned off when you hook it up to your telly, head into the Windows settings, go to System, Display, and then choose the screen behavior, only display on two from this drop-down menu. So with that all said and done, how about installing and playing some games? Have fun with your Xbox Ally, and for more tips or game recommendations, be sure to hit subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. I'm going to play Silksong. It's easy.